Okay, here we are on September 3rd, Labor Day weekend, 2017. And we've decided to have sort of a impromptu, very spontaneous chat with, uh, of course, we know who that is, Don Hilton. And we have uh, Jeff Charming Crane here today with us. Chapman Crane. Chapman Crane. My my apologies. I I get confused by Charmin's. Uh, email. <laughs> it screws me up. Chapman Crane, yeah. who is a, a student, but I'm going to let them do a lot of the talking here. Um, but first, I will have a few questions to get you started. Um, well, Jeff, tell me about uh, when you first uh, met Don. Well, I think it must have been almost exactly 50 years ago. Because I was, uh, we of course first met when I started high school and went to my first uh, art class at Catherine High School, and that was in 1967, probably okay. September. So it's been almost exactly 50 years since we, yeah. since we first met. Yeah. Of course, uh, it was a whole different relationship then, uh, student teacher kind of thing. Yeah. And, <laughs> I have to say, Don was uh, a bit intimidating early on uh, because he he just kind of laid down the the law right from the beginning, and of course you never know about a new teacher how serious they are about their their rules. Some some teachers give you the rules and then they don't really follow them too much, but we we soon found out that Don was uh, not kidding about that. <laughs> And I, I really learned that lesson a few years later. I'll talk about that in, in a bit, but uh, I guess it's, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Um, I think it's an interesting fact of life that uh, you don't recognize the most significant moments in your life when they're happening. It's only uh, later when you reflect on it that, that you realize that, but when I, first met Don Hilton, that was one of the most, well, I don't know, maybe the most significant moment in my life because it's, it's really uh, changed the whole direction of, of my whole life. I, I can't give him too much credit for, for what I learned and, and for everything I've been able to accomplish as an artist. He gets the credit for it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle all that. Um, That's no small endorsement there, Don. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd say uh, Jeff has ended up probably my best student ever, all around student. And I've had some real good ones. And, um, but, but by far, he's it's got the feelings, and I like his attitude towards it, and I like his attitude towards life in general, and that plays a big part in art. Um, uh, I uh, hate to. Hate to Try to pick out the most important time or or something. It's just it. It can happen any time. He calls on on a weekend or something. Say, so can I've done something? Well, it's, can we run out here and talk about it or something? So we're we're have to do that meeting and maybe maybe tomorrow. Who knows? But uh, I like that, and he, he seems to like that. I, I make room for him if he's in town. Yeah. And he wants to come out. Even after 50 years, uh, I still like to bring my work to him, and we talk about it. And yeah. Still learning. Yeah. Still the student. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, I like that. I like seeing that. I, I, I'll tell this story early on so we don't run out of time. Um, I told you that he established his rules and, and he always stuck by them. 
uh, to the letter. You know, uh, you, you learn pretty fast that you know when he when he laid down the the, the law, he meant it. it. One of his rules was that if a piece of work was due on a particular day, there were there were no exceptions. Uh, even if you had to be out, you know, for if you were sick or whatever, you had to send it by somebody. It had to be in that day, or else you you got a zero if it, if it wasn't turned in on time. Um, well, <clears throat> this was my junior year, and I was just I was kind of having a bad year in general, but. Um, Especially the second semester of my junior year in art, uh, I was having a really bad time. We were, we were doing some things that I wasn't particularly interested. In. We were doing pottery and some things, and it, it just wasn't the most interesting thing to me. And so I just didn't do the work, and I ended up actually failing the, the entire semester, of my the second semester of my junior year. And Don had a rule that um, if you fail this semester, that was it. That was, you were out. You, that was the end of your your career as an artist in, in his class. Um, so you know that summer, I thought you know that, I, that it was finished. But there were two things that that happened that, that sort of turned that around. Um, when my parents came to meet with him at the end of the year and talk about this. They took his side. They said, you did the right thing. He didn't turn the work in. He didn't deserve any special treatment. He got exactly what he deserved. And I think Don is pretty impressed with that because most of the time parents would, you know, argue and, and try to, you know, get him to change, change the grade or change their mind. And, and my parents supported him. The other thing is, right before school started the next fall, I went to him and told him I was sorry and, and that I, you know, had messed up. And so he gave me a, a chance to come back my senior year. But I had to come in an extra period and I had to do twice as much work as the other students to make up for that, that junior semester. And so that's what I did, and I actually ended up uh, going in an art a third time during the day, during my study hall period. So my senior year, I was in art three times a day. And I finished the last six weeks with 100 average, which he had never had before. He would never had anybody do that. And it made me realize that I should have been doing that all through, you know. I, I made, I made my share of A's in, in art class, but I made my share of B's and C's, and mm -hmm. even I had that one semester where I failed it. It just made me realize that that's what I should have been doing all along. And pretty much ever since that time, I have uh, tried to maintain a, a high standard for my work. And so I really kind of attribute that, that whole experience to you know that was a that was a very important learning experience for me, and it it, it taught me a very valuable lesson. So uh, I've I've really tried to maintain a really high standard ever since that time. And Let me pick out this. Are you ready? Sure, go ahead. Um, I can hand you stuff. If you want. Uh, how about that? Rags to give you an example of and, and here's the other one too. Okay. Both of those. Um, he's done several um, se several books and things like that. This um, rag seal was. Now you you can tell me if I'm wrong about what the guy said. Um, I believe he said that was the best. Maybe the maybe there was a lady that's. Well, 
Uh, let him, well, I'll let him go. Yeah, yeah, I'll hold it. Yeah, show it so the camera can see. There you go. Okay. So, um, the book was written by a friend of mine, uh, Artie Ann Bates. Uh, we live in the same county. We're friends. that known each other for a little while. Uh, it was published by Houghton Mifflin, so it's a major publisher. And when the book came out, um, it won Best in Show at the New England Book Fair for children's book illustrations that year. And it was also included as one of the top 100 illustrated books by the... Uh, uh, anyway, it was shown in New York City. One of the originals from the book was shown. Uh, there's a, an organization in New York, I can't remember the name of it now, that is about children's books, but it, it was included as, I, I guess it was the New York Society of Illustrators, that's what it was. Which is pretty prestigious. Yeah. They selected it as one of the top 100 books of that year. Oh, wow. And one of the uh, originals was in an exhibit there, so it, it has gotten some awards. And uh, there's a college in Ohio, it's not Ohio State, but a different Ohio University or somewhere. They actually used that book um, with their students as an example of how uh, children's books ought to be illustrated. So it, it's, it's done well. These weren't part Those of the book. Some other this is a pieces that, that dedication to Don here. Yeah. yeah so it's, uh, it's gotten some, some good attention over the years. Showing some samples from the book here, so everyone else can enjoy this. Um, but yeah, you see, these are really nice. And these are, of course, paintings on the back, so back in front. That's really nice paintings. I like it, the cast of cast in the shadow back on there. Remember, we discussed that. Yes. Boy, it does some good stuff. Well, I'd say when you're looking at things, you're not going to find any flaws. Because flaws, if he's um, if you're looking at it, they're not flaws. They're just little markers and stuff that go in the thing. But uh, um, I think the lady, the, it's the way now, this may be wrong. I think the ra uh, lady that, um, that was showing this well, I can't get started there. I don't know what happened. Who wrote that she, one? She wrote that from, uh, uh, you said it a while ago, the name of the book. I mean, oh, yeah, the name of the company. Oh, Same person. Houghton Mifflin. Yeah, Houghton Mifflin. Now, Houghton Mifflin um, publishes. Uh, a big time uh, publisher. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Boston. Lots of, of, uh, how far does it go up, you know? Does, does it go through 12th grade? Well, they publish all kinds of books. Oh, I mean, not they? just children's books. Yeah. They, they publish novels and historical But the yeah, she told, told me, or I found out, I see, I can't, I start out and I can't remember if I was there or somebody told me about it. But he, uh, she said it was the best book that she had ever had, they had had since she was there. She either thought that it yeah. was the best book. The editor so, of, the, of the children's section. Yeah, was, was it there? something similar yeah. to that? Okay. Now this book that Don's looking at right now is a book of poetry. It's called Give God a Flower. And it was written by a man named Cranston Shoup. Or Cranston, let me see. I'm gonna make sure I get that name right. Yeah, 
Cranston yeah. Stroop. Yeah. Um, and it was it was edited by Richard Austin, um, who is Cranston Stroop's nephew. Cranston Stroop was a poet that uh, lived in the 30s and 40s, and was actually a friend of John Steinbeck's. Uh, but he died, I think, in his his early 40s, and his poetry just sort of went unnoticed for for a long, long time. And it was. His nephew Richard Austin, who found the poems and sort of put them together and edited and, and published this book and, and uh, hired me to do the uh, illustrations. Uh, all of the illustrations are of different flowers, different wildflowers. But um, he was the, the writer was an environmentalist who was way ahead of his his time. He. And a lot of the, the poetry is about that, that whole conflict between, you know, the need for jobs and all of this versus taking care of the environment. So he, he had that vision long before it was very popular. So a lot of the poems reflect that. It's a really good, I think it's a good, good piece of work. Mm -hmm, yeah. It was published, you know, by... Um, I mean, the, yeah, and it's got the editor all kind of basically financed the publishing of it, so it's... Yeah, I'll take yeah, it. You, okay. I'll sh show some these are copies. Real, real intimate shots and stuff. Here, I'll share some shots from this for you. I guess they're throughout. Let's see here. There's usually one on the on the front and back of each page that has an illustration. So. Now, is this the? Um, have you done any other books? Oh, we've done uh, some covers for a, a two or three books, but not any other. Illustrations, but this book was—it's uh, got handset lettering, um, and it's uh, there are only 500 printed, so it's a rare, oh wow, very artistically produced book. The handset letter press. So, back to the interview part of this, I'm going to ask Jeff some questions um, about you, what, what really impresses you about Don as an artist? A couple of things. His versatility, for one. Uh, he's done everything in every medium you can practically imagine, from watercolor to oil to sculpture in wood and marble and clay. And, Pottery, I mean, he just, he has such a wide range of, of uh, I don't know, just the, the different mediums and different approaches. And the other thing that, that really always impressed me was uh, he would often spend his summer vacation learning a new material or a technique or medium so that he could teach it to his students. He wanted to have experience with it himself so that he could teach his students. He was always, always the teacher, always thinking about his students. Um, so you and we, we benefited from his experience. But he wanted to know about the medium before he taught it to us. So uh, those two things. But it's, I guess his, my favorite of all his works are probably his wood sculptures like this one. Oh yeah. The Medusa over here. Well, yeah, that, that kind of goes without saying. Three dimensional work is just outstanding. <laughs> yeah, uh, that Medusa is one of my favorites too. He's never really given away his favorite. <laughs> he probably won't either. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's just his way. But I'm going to ask you the same question um, about Jeff, about what what oppresses you about like his work now and as an artist in general. What most impresses well, you? He's, I just like his consistency. 
he didn't do any bad stuff. There's some, some's better than others. You could you could sort out uh, everything that's been done in in our time, and uh, he is just uh, he shoots real high. Sometimes, if I did that, would say well as has a little remember that rock was a little bit out of place or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I've enjoyed looking over them. Now, it pays to have, and I've told them, told students, it pays to have somebody else look at your work because they can see if there's mistakes and stuff, it's apt to jump out to, to new eyes. Um, and uh, I took advantage of theirs. If they came by and said one ear is longer than another, and they felt free to say that, I said, uh huh, but that ear a little too long or too short, as the case may be. Um, but I like to have them around, and students, I could. I could I'm not uh, infallible. I can get an ear or two long. Just like anybody else. Just don't tell anybody, right? Hey, yeah, don't brag <laughs> on it too much. Kind of cover that up and we'll fix that ear. That's something I learned from him was um, don't point out your mistakes. You know, when you're a real self-critical about what you're doing, whether it be watercolor or music, you don't want to say, oh, yeah, right there is where I messed up. Yeah. yeah. That's my tendency. And he said, no, don't do that. Yeah. Well, I, it's another thing I've always appreciated about Don is that, uh, like you said, you, you have to have somebody to to talk to to about your work. That's going to tell you the truth. That's going to tell you if you need to change something or if you just need to to aim a little higher or or whatever. Uh, I could always depend on Don to to give me an honest assessment or, or critique. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that, that kind of stung uh, early on, you know. Oh, uh, it did. But I could prepare, prepare you some uh, for, for down the line. Um, as students in class, they just get up, uh, they just appoint somebody and say, hey, stop there and stand there for us, uh, 15 minutes or something. Um, but I never did take that person, and especially if I didn't know them, I was kind of leery about getting on them about something. They hadn't been taught. Some student, some teacher just didn't do a very good job, some haze up on them, because that hurts. It's like somebody's carving on you with a knife or something. A little bit. And, yeah. I remember my, my freshman year, um, there needed to be something, some lettering done on a, a door and, and down in the gym or something, a, a number or whatever. And Don gave me a lettering brush and told me to go down and letter this on the door. Well, uh, the next day, the only thing he said was, uh, well, you're not too much with a lettering brush, are you? <laughs> so that, that kind of hurt, but it, yeah. it did make me uh, try a little harder the next time. And yeah. we, we got, <laughs> I got better at it. <laughs> but uh, I remember for the longest time, the, the best compliment he, he would give you was, well, that's a pretty fair effort. And I, when I finally got to the point where he said more than that, I, I felt like I'd really arrived at it. <laughs> you know, when he would say more than that, it's a pretty fair effort. But, um, well, Jeff gave his share of the good efforts. Um, Once I learned my lesson, I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I remember. Could have uh, been the, I could have been, well, to see uh, other people wouldn't look at stuff. And even even you could show them, I would like. I 
I'd show Jeff stuff and a lot of the other students, because I had good students, yeah. all I want to say, and they'd, uh, they'd give a good, and you're lucky to be in a class with good students. Um, if you're in there with people that didn't give a hang and everything was funny and giggly, you're not going anywhere. And funny and giggly will get you beat. Um, but, but in, in the end, uh, I put my students up against anybody, anywhere or any, anybody. I, that's had the olds. I don't I didn't want them down there somewhere in the kitty leagues. We're going to compete with Dobbins Bennett's best and anybody out there in the community. And did. One of the things I always appreciated about you is that you never set limitations on, on what you thought we could do. Uh, no. <laughs> you never told us that we had no business doing the kind of work that we were doing. I mean, no. after, after I graduated, I continued to go back and, and take work over to him and uh, probably learned as much mm -hmm. in those mm -hmm. few years after I graduated as I did while I was there. But quite honestly, the, the strongest competition I had was from his students. You know, the, the best work being done in, in the Kingsport area was by his students. And they're, they're the ones that kind of kept me on my toes. Yeah. Uh, They'd eat your lunch if you'd let them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they were, I mean, and, and part of that was that after the freshman year, after your first year of art, you were thrown in with second and third and fourth year, you know, with third and fourth year students juniors and seniors who had been there for that whole time. You were competing for the same, for the grades with these students who, had, who were in third year, fourth year art. Uh, there was no separation after your freshman year. Uh, and so the, but it was a, a healthy competition. We never, we were never jealous of each other. We never, there was never any backbiting or anything like that. It was all a healthy, competition and when it was kind of designed to, to lift the whole program, you know, mm -hmm. for all of us to kind of improve together. And, and you could see over the years oh, the improvement was... each year. I mean, each year the, the, the standard just got higher and higher and higher I to wanna... the point that, you know, students were doing self-portraits in oil uh, and, and these sculptures and Big paintings, I mean, just fabulous work. Well, I want to ask you if you know any anybody that's, uh, that's graduated, of course they took them home. I had them do their self-portraits on, I had them make a shell uh, in Egyptian style and paint themselves on there in the same thing. Well, had you, did you get I to don't see them? And that. then we put them in the library and they were around. They were in some garages or maybe in some somebody's uh, bedroom or whatever, standing around in the corner. But it's uh, isn't very impressive. But we, I had to let them take them. We, they couldn't stay up long. It's right to end of school. And I. I got disjointed or something. I would have had them write to put their address or something so I could so I could keep up with them. Uh, I remember that, but one of the things I do remember you did, and this was after I graduated. We never did this while I was there. Uh, you were having students do sculptures of like heads, but instead of just starting with the, the face, you actually had them do a skull. And then you add, had them add the, the clay onto that. Mm -hmm. But you had them do the skull so that they really understood the bone structure of the face and yeah. all that. So yeah. you had them do that first and they just built the face around that, which was Memory, really, really impressive. Uh, yeah. But I don't know, just, just your, the, the approach that you had to teaching them. Well, I started uh, in college like. I'd, I'd gone to college and I saw it. My parents couldn't couldn't really afford anything much. 
butter and egg money is about it. Um, but I just had to start at the very bottom because I told some of them I didn't know what uh, what kind of ink. I say, golly, you, uh, you're going to ink that and you brush this. And I'd never seen these brushes, oddball brushes. I knew nothing about that. Uh, and I, the others who had been in Science Hill, they were a way ahead because they had had it. Um, but that put me in a bad situation that I didn't like. So I, I worked them. I tried to. Uh, that's one good way of, of getting even or, or winning is put forth that extra effort. Uh, and gosh, I wanted us putting pressure on ourselves. Uh, not only just to beat somebody, but to better, you know, beat the, beat the last thing that you tried. Uh, yeah, the, the competition was not among you know, the other schools, it was, no, it even, was between his students. We that, didn't even consider that. The, the real yeah. push was, you know, you got this this sophomore who, yeah. uh, you know, is, is Everybody a real him. ringer, <laughs> yeah. and, and you, you better, you know, not, not yeah. you, one of the terms yeah. you like to use was being shot out of the saddle. Yeah. Talking about <laughs> not wanting to get shot out of the saddle by <laughs> yeah. this, this been kid been that was just a freshman last year. And, you yeah. Know, <laughs> so that was always a, there was always oh, this competition yeah. from from within the, the the students there. It was not from outside the school. It was but inside. they'd holler stuff down the halls. They'd holler it. So yeah, you gotta let Parsley night beat you today. Yeah. But like I said, it was never a, it was never a vicious kind of a competition. It was always no. always a healthy thing, and, and we were always encouraged to help one another. Too. Yep. You know. Um. I've had them feel sick and stuff. Other, their buddy's parent would bring it in. Yeah. I said, well, good. I, they knew that if they could get that in there, if they were really sick, I still, you gonna, you know, somebody that's that's got a little time that you run that thing down there and pay, they come and knock on the door and bring their homework. Because it's just that important. Yeah. You need to do it or we find somebody at will. We'll find that little girl sitting back there. I ain't, don't know your name yet because you hadn't been in class long enough. But I'll get to know you and then you look at these people around here which are which they think are pretty good and give you a chance at seeing how good they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I tried to take the the person low on the totem pole. I tried to give them a boost too. I tried to brag on them. They need them a little bit. But Jeff didn't need much boost and he had enough going for him. Well, I wanted to thank you both for sitting down and doing this with me. I thought it was a nice opportunity that when Jeff come by to visit, and we'll have this to remember as well. So, yeah. thank you both. Well, thank you for having us.